Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be talking about the entry level accounting jobs you can expect to have as a new graduate with a four year degree in accounting. So we'll be talking about the salary expectations. What can you expect as a salary when you first start out right after college, as well as the two main industries you can work in, which is public accounting and private accounting. What kind of job titles you can expect to have and the job responsibilities of each of these job titles. That's the topic of this video today. So stick around. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Bill Hanna, I'm the financial controller. I'm a licensed CPA in the great state of New York, and I have over 15 years of experience in the field of finance, where I started out at PricewaterhouseCoopers as an auditor, and then I transitioned out to private industry, and then I worked my way up from a financial analyst position all the way up to a corporate controller position, which is what I do today. And this channel is all about giving you the summary or the juice of my experience over the last decade and a half. And I do this here in the YouTube channel, as well as on my website through blog posts, an online course and templates. So go ahead and check that out as well. All right, first and foremost, let's talk about everybody's favorite subject, which is money. How much money can you expect to be making as a new accounting graduate with a four year degree in accounting as opposed to an associate degree? So we're talking about here a four year degree, which is a bachelor's degree in accounting. So let's jump into my computer and I'm going to show you what kind of salary you'll be looking at. There are so many places online where you can find the average salary information for an entry level uh, junior accountant, but I've chose to look at ZipRecruiter because this is one of the websites that I like to use when I'm hiring for a new accounting position on my team. So by looking at ZipRecruiter, we can see that the national average here in the United States is $43,000 a year. While in New York City, which is the market that I am in, the average salary is 48,000 almost here, uh, or that translates into $23 an hour. But you can see that the range can go all the way up to almost 58,000 here, depending on the industry that you work in. Uh, some industries are more lucrative than others. For example, some of these software companies are paying higher salaries than say manufacturing companies or services companies. So depending on the industry, you can command a higher salary as an entry level accountant. So this is obviously a very good number, like $48,000 right out of school is a very good number and I highly recommend accounting as a field. Obviously, I've been in accounting, if you've been following the channel, you'll know that I've been in accounting for the last 15, 16 years. So I am um, recommending it based on experience. So we're looking at 48,000 here as an average in New York City or 43,000 uh, nationwide. All right, let's talk about the industries you can be working in. So there are two major industries when it comes to accounting. So you're gonna be choosing between working for a public accounting or a public accounting firm, usually doing either audit or tax work, or you're gonna be working in private accounting. And private accounting uh, means that you're working for a company rather than a public accounting firm. And this company could be a publicly listed company or a publicly traded company or a private smaller company. And so these are the two major industries, either public accounting, working for a public accounting firm, or private accounting, which is working for a company directly doing the accounting work at the company itself. All right, so first let's take a look at the job titles and job descriptions for working in public accounting or a public accounting firm job description. So like we said, you're gonna be either working in audit or in tax. If you work in audit, you'll be an audit associate, uh, and if you work in tax, you'll be a tax associate. So let's, let's take a look at the job responsibilities for an audit associate so that we can get a taste on what kind of work that you're gonna be doing. All right, so if you take a look here, this is an audit associate position in Boston working for Resnick Group. And Resnick is one of the uh, sort of the national accounting firms that you can work at. And let's take a look at the responsibilities for an auditor. So basically what they're saying here is that you're gonna be responsible for assisting in areas of audit, review, compilations, and accounting services. Obviously, uh, working in audits, that's gonna be sort of the highest level of assurance. So you're gonna be working within a team, performing an audit for the client, uh, or you're gonna be working on a review engagement, which is a slightly less assurance type um, of service than audit, and you'll be doing also some review work for clients. Uh, compilation, meaning that you, uh, you're gonna be compiling financial statements for the client. So compilation refers to gathering information and creating financial statements. Um, and, and you know, obviously a various other types of accounting services for these clients. And it says here that you're gonna be working, um, you work on a variety of client deliverables and preparing work papers. So client deliverables means that you'll have some areas assigned to you in the audit engagement. Um, say on the income statement, maybe a couple of the expense uh, line items, and you're gonna be working on verifying and gathering evidence to support these line items on the financial statements. So 
what they mean here by preparing uh, work papers, uh, work papers is the actual support for the audit work that you're doing. So if, for example, if you're auditing an expense line item, the working papers will be the supporting invoices or Excel files or whatever calculation that supports the expense on the income statement. Uh, and so this is what they're referring to here by preparing work papers. It says you're gonna be resolving audit issues, obtaining evidence and making inquiries with the clients. So uh, audit issues, obviously, whenever you have a discrepancy between what you're seeing on the financial statement and the support that you gather, now you have an issue, right? If you have a difference between what's in the income statement and the support, you have an issue. So your job here is gonna be resolving this issue. And how are you gonna resolve this issue? Uh, it's gonna be either by speaking to the client, you know, making inquiries, asking questions, uh, or obtaining further evidence. So maybe there is more evidence to be had to support that difference between what you're seeing uh, on the two documents. So this is what, the, what it means here by resolving audit issues. Uh, it says you're gonna be understanding the client's accounting systems. So typically when you work on a client's audit um, engagement, first, the first thing you do is you sit with the client and walk through their accounting system. So the client will be showing you how their accounting system works. So you need to develop an understanding of the accounting system that the client is using. Um, you also need to understand and apply concepts of materiality and audit risk. And obviously as a new associate, you're not gonna be super versed in materiality and audit risk approaches um, this is something that you maybe have learned in school in an auditing class, um, but you're not expected to really be experienced in this stuff. You're going to be learning it on the job. So don't stress over, um, you know, uh, learning concepts of materiality and audit risk. Uh, every company or every, fir every firm will teach you their approach to the materiality and audit risk. Uh, and then it says prepare work papers um, that are informative, well-documented, cross-referenced, cross and can easily be understood and explained. And this is one of the core areas of audit work is the actual work papers, right? So the work papers, are, like we said, refers to the evidence that you gather, right? So the evidence that you gather, let's say, for example, uh, an Excel file. This Excel file needs to be uh, named correctly. So the name of the file refers to the content so that when someone looks at the name, they immediately know what's in inside the file. And also when you save it, say, in a computer, you're saving it in the right folder. So let's say uh, there are subfolders for the engagement. Uh, you create the right folder or save it in the right place so that that makes it easy for someone else to find it and then read the name and understand what's, what's the file referring to. But beyond that, when you open the file itself, and this is something that I see a lot of new associates doing wrong, uh, but you learn it over time, is that you need to be uh, creating the content of the Excel file or whatever the Word document, whatever the file you're creating, so that's easy to follow, right? So that when someone else opens it, there is enough documentation in there and description of what's going on, so that's easy to understand, and you're not trying to uh, guess here what, what's happening in this file. So this is what it means here by preparing work papers that are informative, well-documented, cross-referenced, <clears throat> excuse me, and can easily be understood and explained. So these are the general job duties of an auditor. As you can see here, the requirements are a bachelor's or a master's degree in accounting, a minimum GPA of 3.0 in both your major and overall, um, CPA eligible with 150 credits required upon your start date. So this is obviously uh, gonna be important for you in order to get the CPA license. Uh, CPA license is gonna be crucial for an audit position uh, as opposed to the other roles that we'll be talking about. So if your goal is to become a CPA, you wanna be an audit because this is the, this, you're gonna get the most bang for your buck for your CPA license. Um, if you're not gonna become a CPA, then uh, the other positions that we'll talk about now are gonna be better for you, such as tax or private accounting. Uh, with tax, um, you could become a CPA, it's sometimes helpful, but there is another certification with tax in the US, which is enrolled agent with IRS, which is another type of certification that is uh, a little bit less study, less work, less examination for it. Um, and so for audit, you need to become a CPA for tax. Uh, it's usually an EA or enrolled agent with IRS. Um, and then we'll talk about private accounting, which typically doesn't require becoming a CPA. So this here are the general requirements for a um, sort of an audit associate or entry level audit associate in the United States.
right, let's take a look at the second area in public accounting, which is tax. Uh, so you'll be working as a tax associate at a public accounting firm. So let's take a look here. This is an entry level tax accountant position uh, in Fulham Park, New Jersey. Um, and so if you look here at the uh, job responsibilities, basically what you'll be doing is preparing tax returns. So it could be at 1040 or 1041. Um, you know, 1040 obviously is for individual taxation. So this is typically a high net worth individuals um, or partnerships, uh, which is 1065 or corporations, which is 1120. This is the, the major tax form or income tax form uh, in the US under the supervision, um, you know, under supervision from more experienced staff. So obviously here what they're saying is you're going to be doing these things, but under the supervision of more experienced staff. So you'll be getting the guidance you need to be able to do this stuff. Also, it says here, interact and communicate with clients. So obviously for you to prepare the tax return, you need to gather the actual information from the clients, right? So you need to be able to communicate with the client via email, phone, uh, gather the information that are necessary for uh, to prepare the tax return. Uh, you're gonna conduct tax research as necessary. So obviously there's like new guidance coming out from the IRS each year. So in every area you're assigned to, you're gonna be looking at the tax code and trying to interpret what, it's, what it says. Again, this is an entry level position. You're gonna be working under the supervision of more experienced staff. So you're not gonna be left out on the cold trying to ex understand what's going on with the tax code. So uh, don't be nervous over that. You will have plenty of mentorship when it comes to that. Uh, you're gonna be working directly with seniors, supervisors, managers and, managers and partners as expected. Obviously, these are all the levels in the um, CPA firm. Uh, you're gonna become familiar with the firm's policies and procedures regarding the tax assignments. Again, you're going to be also training. You're going to be attending a lot of workshops within the firm. Uh, they'll teach you. This is an entry level position. Uh, so there's a lot of learning that's going to be happening. Uh, the, what they are requiring here is a bachelor uh, or a master's degree in accounting. Um, you know, graduation with 150 credits. I'm assuming that's because 150 credits is becoming now the requirement to become a CPA in most states in the United States. Um, and so um, they also require a minimum GPA of 3.0. Again, we've seen that in the previous job uh, post. So obviously getting your grades up is very important for you to get the first job, right? Um, uh, excellent verbal, written and organiza organization skills, blah, blah, blah. So all of this, this is the stuff that's required. You know, this is the things that you're gonna be doing uh, in tax accounting, and this is the requirements for the job. All right, so now we cover public accounting or working at a public accounting firm. Let's talk about private accounting. And what I mean by that is working for the company directly. Uh, in the accounting team in the company. And there are two major areas uh, in the company you can choose from when, you, uh, when you're when you getting started. So either you're gonna be working in the billing side of the business, so the revenue or the billing side as a billing analyst, or you're gonna be working on the expenditure side as an accounts payable accountant. So you can choose one of the two, uh, they're both good. Um, you need to learn both ultimately, so you need to maybe spend a couple of years in each of these kind of positions so you can become more rounded uh, and understand both sides of the business um, for you to progress in your career. But you can choose es essentially at the beginning between a billing, billing analyst or an accounts receivable analyst or accounts payable. So let's dive in and take a look at what a billing analyst does. All right, so this is a billing analyst position at WebMD. Uh, WebMD obviously is a company where you can go and read like reviews on doctors and clinics. Uh, so let's take a look here, what you will be doing at WebMD. So you'll be responsible for the bi-weekly invoice preparation and distribution. So obviously this is the main task of a billing analyst is the preparation of invoices, right? So in this case here, I'm assuming uh, that WebMD is gonna be invoicing doctors, right? Doctors are gonna be the clients of WebMD. Uh, you're gonna be sending out invoices, and in here it says that it's a bi-weekly invoice preparation process. So in some companies, the invoicing process is gonna be monthly. In here, it seems to be bi-weekly. In some cases, invoicing is ongoing, continuous, meaning you're issuing invoices every day. Uh, so uh, this is something to understand here, that this is a bi-weekly invoicing preparation. Uh, you're gonna be researching and resolving billing inquiries and assist with client account reconciliation. So billing inquiries are gonna be obviously coming from the doctors or the clients of this company. And you're gonna get these inquiries by email most likely. Um, someone is gonna be asking a question about one of the invoices. You're gonna research it, get back to them uh, and explain the invoice. And you're gonna be obviously assisting with the client account reconciliation, meaning that you're looking at each doctor's account or customer's account and reconciling it, making sure that they're paying on time, making sure that there are no outstanding invoices uh, that are past due. 
Uh, you're gonna be also working closely with both sales media operations to ensure billing accuracy. So sales and media operations in this case is the internal team within the company uh, that is gonna be giving you information on uh, what you can be invoicing for. So you're gonna be working very closely with the sales and the internal team, the operations team, uh, to make sure the billing accuracy is correct. Uh, monthly review of the incomplete report and secure billing status and sales operations for unbilled balances. So I'm assuming here that incomplete report is sort of an internal report that they generate that shows them whether the, the billing for the month is complete or incomplete. Um, every company has a version of that, of finding a way to uh, have a report that makes sure that the billing is complete, right? Uh, you're gonna be responding in a timely manner to sales and client inquiries and assist with quarterly audits and as necessary. Um, so obviously, you know, you're going to be getting, getting questions from sales, uh, the sales team within the company you're working in, and also questions from the clients. Uh, you're going to be assisting and, you know, answering these questions as well as being involved in the audits, um, inside the company, uh, whether it's an internal audit or an external audit. And then obviously there's the occasional ad hoc, uh, you know, project requested by management. So these are the general job responsibilities. Uh, for a billing analyst position. All right, now that we cover billing analysts, let's talk about the accounts payable position. If you work in the expenditure side of the business or the accounts payable side of the business, let's take a look at an accounts payable position. And this is the accounts payable specialist position uh, by Atrium Staffing. Um, let's take a look, as you can see here, uh, you know, the salary range is 50K to 55K. So it's pretty nice uh, salary for an entry level position. So what you'll be doing here is you'll be processing invoices, uh, schedule and prepare checks and resolve purchase orders. So as an accounts payable associate, you'll be reconciling purchase orders, um, whatever the company has approved to purchase and reconcile that with the invoice. So when you get an invoice from a vendor, you'll be matching it with a purchase order to make sure that this is something that the company actually authorized uh, purchasing. So um, you'll be doing that as well as preparing the checks. Um, and this is obviously an entry level position. So they'll be showing you how to prepare checks and resolve purchase orders and all that stuff. Um, receive and verify expense reports. So what we're talking about here, expense reports from the internal staff of the company. The actual staff of the company will be spending on business, um, you know, expenditures such, such as travel, um, you know, their cell phone, their internet connection, things like that. And they'll be submitting expense reports uh, for the company to get reimbursed. So uh, one of your job responsibilities is going to be reviewing these expense reports and making sure they're correct, they're approved by the right manager, and that they're ready for payment. Um, you're going to also be doing, um, you know, going to be processing check requests and expense reports again. Uh, expense reports and then perform monthly account reconciliation. So what they're saying here is that account reconciliation. So what you'll doing, what you'll be doing every month at the end of each month to close the books, is generate an AP aging or accounts payable aging schedule that shows um, by bucket what's owed uh, to vendors and making sure that reconciles to the balance in a balance sheet. Uh, and also you got to be looking at it to make sure that uh, you know you're not late on payments to vendors, right? So this is what it means to reconcile the account at each month's uh, end. And then you have audit, um, audit and process credit card bills. So you'll be getting also company credit card bills. You'll be also reviewing that, making sure that the expenses on it are correct, have supporting receipts and are booked correctly on the books and records. Uh, perform data entry associated with accounts payable. Um, also maintaining financial records um, by filing documents. So filing is important for this job because you'll be having a lot of paperwork, a lot of supporting Excel files and things like that and PDF files. Uh, so, you know, having a good filing system is going to be good. And, you know, obviously this is an entry level position. So don't stress too much on like, this is something you need to be knowing beforehand, but just be open to learning because you'll be learning that on the job. Also, it says here that you'll be reviewing and maintaining high volume of vendor accounts and correct payment discrepancies. So obviously, if there are any discrepancies in the payments that you're making, you, uh, your job is gonna be to kind of investigate and resolve these discrepancies. Uh, and then obviously accurately um, review code and process invoices. And what we mean by that is that you obviously reviewing the invoices you're getting from vendors, but coding, what they refer by coding, is how you enter it in the accounting system. So coding re uh, refers to the uh, process of choosing the right um, GL code or general ledger account number for the income statement or the balance sheet or whatever what you're booking. Uh, so coding is the selecting the GL account, the department, 
location and things like that in account in the accounting package uh, and in the process of you know booking these invoices so these are the general job responsibilities um, for an accounts payable specialist all right i hope you find this video informative and if you do maybe share it with a friend who might benefit from it and if you liked it smash that like button and i'll see you in the next video